La Guamengo, same thing with the Prime Minister. <laughs> uh, we have a few folks from St. Lucia and the main known as Peter. We have Tommy, your area is where?
but thanks be to God because on the third day he walked. Oh. Yes, sir. The resurrection made it possible. And that's why we can say, thank you, Jesus, for your death, but thank you, Jesus, for your resurrection. <laughs> and so, not just his death reminds of the communion, but also his resurrection with a phrase that says, do this in remembrance of me. This was done just prior to the last Passover, a Jewish so to speak, festival uh, commemorating the protection of God's people when the angel of what? Death. Of death passed, yes sir. When the angel of death passed over Egypt and slay all of those born except those that had the what? Blood. The blood on their doors. And we know for no that our heart is the doorpost for Jesus to come in. And that's why he's coming today. Come in to stay into my heart, Lord Jesus. So my suggestion to somebody is to sprinkle your doorpost with the blood of Jesus. Morning, noon, and night. Every time you get up, Imagine uh, with your Holy Ghost imagination that you are taking uh, your finger, dipping it in that pool of blood that Jesus shed for you and I, and you sprinkle your heart and say, Father, I am sprinkling myself so that when the angel of death pass by tonight, you will read, Remember me. Consider it not, or oh, forget it not, that the angel of death always seek to pass by. You don't know when he's passing by. I don't know when he's passing by, but guess what? He's passing by. But if we have our hearts sprinkled with the blood of the J-E-S in the U.S. That's right then we know we will be protected. This the service of the Passover continued during the period that Christ was on earth. And just, here you go, prior to his death, the Passover was held one more time. You all remember? And he invited the disciples to what? To the upper room to share with him the last meal, and we call it the last what? The last supper, yes. The upper room was located, said, in Jerusalem on Mount Zion. Today it is called, when the priest and the man call it cynical. Alright, it is called today the cynical. This is where the first uh, uh, Christian church was located. He ministered to 12 disciples. But one of the twelve was very terrible. Judas. Judas did not stay to partake because he would have been partaken of the communion service unworthily. And so, just for a word, despite how much and how good and how eloquent we can preach or sing or teach, what I do. Always remember that it's somebody that is not for you. You don't preach to make everybody for you. Whereas you don't preach to make everybody against you. You preach because Jesus Christ gave you the authority to what? To preach. So you preach in season, out of season, during season, and if there is no season, you still preach. Because God has given 
The one prayer that Christ used showed that the church must be one. And I want you to listen because there is not so much of a preaching, but it's an understanding of why the communion service is had. The one prayer that Christ used showed that the church must be what? One. And so when the, 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 the prayer is broken, is a demonstration that Christ shared his body for you and I. So he died so that we can what? Live. Live. Yes, indeed. This concept I have here, Pastor Elders, this concept calls Protestant, Protestant reformers, Luther and Zwingli, to argue bitterly. And they split over whether, whether yeah, it goes, they split over whether the bread and the wine were the actual flesh and blood of Christ. For merely it's a sin, it symbolized his body and blood uh, that was shared for us. And it's an argument that still persists to this very day. And there are some people and some churches that teach otherwise. So you have different theology concerning the communion, concerning the bread, and concerning the wine. What are they? One is called transubstantiation. One is called what? Transubstantiation. Big word! But understand its significance. Because if you don't, you will get confused. Somebody may invite you to another church. And let me just interject here. It's nothing wrong if you go and visit another church. However, I would suggest be careful with the other church you visit. And two, make sure that you are under the blood when you visit. Let me repeat that. Because I know some people that will not come to a Seventh-day Adventist church. You know why? Because the, the, the talk is Seventh-day Adventists do not go to nobody else. And sometimes to win some, you have to try to understand where they are. Are you with me? It may, it may sound tough, but sometimes you have to go to bring. And if you visit with them, then they might in turn visit with you. And if you are sure that your church has the Holy Spirit with you there, then you have no reason to fear. When they come, they might very well stay because you are praying God that the Holy Spirit and when you go, if you are not so sure, you are saying, Holy Spirit, protect me from the sin of the fowler and from the Lord of pestilences. Are you with me? When you go, tell yourself you are under the blood. And so the, the, the transubstantiation, uh, meaning here that during the Mass, the bread, and when I say mass, you all know where I'm, where I'm going now. What church has mass? Catholic. Catholic church. So I just say transubstantiation. Right? And so the, the Catholic church, uh, they teach that during the mass, the bread, as you take off the bread, it becomes what? The literal body of Jesus Christ. Um, I, I am giving you the teaching now of the Catholic Church. And so some people are, are visiting the church and they, they are not even so sure what's going on. And, and that's why I even said I wanted to just uh, quickly hear, know why you believe what you believe. I want to be quickly to just hear, know why you believe what you believe. No, if you consider yourself a Sunday Adventist, why are you a Sunday Adventist? No, if you are keeping Sabbath, why you are keeping Sabbath? No, if you are under the Holy Spirit, why are you speaking tongues and why you don't speak in tongues? Because if you speak in tongues, I don't want to know why. 
And I'm, and I'm saying, even as a Seventh-day Adventist, you can't speak in tongues. That's our whole debate again. Because some Seventh-day Adventists believe you cannot speak in tongues. I am saying, yes, you could speak in tongues. However, come and do, do, do. And so the, 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 the transubstantiation means that the, when you partake of the communion service, you are partaking of the actual body of Jesus and you are drinking the actual wine. You know the one that is called in, 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 in a scientific term? Cannibalism. You do you, you drink in blood? You have to have vampire tendency running through you. Huh? Is that the, some something where you may as well roast the flesh and, and see how it is? Sprinkle it with a few salt. <laughs> and then you have substantiation, which the, is the other side of the argument. And substantiation means to say that when you partake, it becomes a what? A symbol. It's now a symbol of the, the when you take the, 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 the bread, the bread is not an actual body, but it has been a what? A symbol of the body of Christ that was shared. And when you drink the wine, it is a symbol of his blood that was shed. And that's why he said, as often as you do it, you do it in. And this is what we participate in. Uh, I will cut it short here in righteousness. This is what we participate in. We believe that Christ's body on the cross was already shed. We believe that his blood on the cross of Calvary was already given on behalf of humankind. He did it once and for all. And so it's, the communion service is not a repetition of killing God over a new and eating of his body over a new and drinking his blood over the other. Matter of fact, it never occurred. Let me, let me repeat that. As a matter of fact, the teaching of the body of Christ and the drinking of the blood of Christ never occurred. Pastor, am I correct on that? When he died on the cross, I don't recall everybody on the, the soldiers that was, was part of the army. I can recall Sister Fortune that they say, hey, you know what you want to do? And so it's a myth, it's something that the church developed and they believe they have the authority to do whatever because God is enshrined through the, through the, the Pope. I have a problem with that. I don't know about you. And so, please, when you partake of the communion service, notice, as often as you do it, but even prior to that, notice that it is a symbol. It is a what? And, 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 and Ethan, you need to remember that. Andy, you need to remember that. Precious, you need to remember that. And Princess, you all need to remember that. That it is a symbol. So when you are in school and your friends and them talk about the Eucharist, the Eucharist which, which is, is taken into consideration the actual body, and the actual blood say no, they ain't so. Not, and don't tell them my pastor says so. Let them know the Bible never teach that. It never taught us that the, 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 the bread is the actual body or his blood is what we are actually drinking. 
we believe in substantiation, which means that it is a symbol. And Christ says, here it goes, as often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of him until he comes. And so as we separate ourselves to participate in it, please examine yourself. Don't participate on burden. I cannot tell you not to. I want to repeat this. I cannot tell you not to. I remember the church um, used to look at people and, and uh, you just have to watch them. Uh, because your age, which I still think has some significance, mm -hmm. but uh, once you reach the age of reasoning, I cannot tell you what age is that, but I can make a cut of point. I can suggest uh, eight years and below, probably now some folk might say. May not, may not, and why I say may not, because you have some homes that an eight year old grow up into a Christian what? Setting and that person baptized and they understand and what have you. And so that person may be able to because they have a better understanding, but at an average, so to speak. Please examine yourself. Know that the communion service is, is like a mini baptism. You are starting anew with Christ. You are saying, Lord, forgive me for the what? The past sins of commission and sins of omission. I want to make it new with you. I want to renew my vow with you again. Use this communion service and know this that at your participation, Christ is taking it as an indication that you are renewing your vows with him. Treat it with that respect. And know that when you leave this place after participating, you are leaving anew in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. During the singing of the song, all right, in the blood from no, 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 oh, no. During the singing of that song, uh, three one. 332. During the singing of that hymn, we're going to separate men. We will be Thank you. 